The Apothecary Diaries is a seinen that features a female protagonist. Mau Mau is weird, ugly, and poor. And her romantic interest is a rich, pretty boy. Truly, we have seen this before. What made The Apothecary Diaries a show that we will talk about for years? Welcome to the second episode of my podcast, So Sugoi, where we talk about everything that is So Sugoi about our favorite anime. Today's show is The Apothecary Diaries. Spoilers. You have been warned. I have three theories as to why the Apothecary Diaries is such a success. One, the characters are really compelling and captivating. Even if you don't like them, you have to root for them. Two, the Apothecary Diaries respects its audience. Three, and this is probably the simplest, most shallow reason to like it, but it's really pretty. It does anime really well. Why do we like Mau Mau and why do we root for her? Better question, have you heard of Maslow's hierarchy? Imagine a pyramid with five levels and each level features something different. Each level contains a human need, but the higher up you go, the harder they are to obtain. At the very bottom are your psychological needs. Breathing, food, water, shelter, clothing, sleep. The next level is safety, security, Above that is love and belonging, then self-esteem, and at the very top, which is something that really nobody truly acquires, my gosh, can I say the word? Self-actualization. Self Our protagonist has been kidnapped and forced into servitude against her will. She was in a place where she was safe and had all of her needs met. Now she's in a place where she is at the very bottom of the totem pole, and one wrong step can put her in extreme danger. She still has her psychological needs, but she's missing a lot of her other needs. Needs from the safety and security category. That's going to be things like property and family. The lower on the list your needs are, the more likely people are going to want you to have those needs. It's just human nature. We're not that cruel of a species. For example, Denji from Chainsaw Man. Episode one, Denji wants one thing. Okay, he wants two things. One of them is boobs, but we'll talk about that later. Denji wants toast with jam. Even if you thought he was the grossest main character, even if you thought he was a disgusting human, you can still sit down and say, this starving boy deserves toast with jam. Now, having very basic needs is a reason why we may root for her, but it's not the only reason why we like her. No matter who we are, I think we're able to see a bit of ourselves in Mau Mau. All of us have jobs that are controlling and overbearing, and we live in a society that has social hierarchies. They may not be to the extreme as make-believe medieval China, but there are still rules that we follow, and a lot of us aren't as high up on the totem pole as we would like to be. Apothecary Diaries could definitely serve as a form of escapism for people that are trapped in a similar situation as Mau Mau. Lastly, and obviously, Mau Mau is a good person. She's a really good person. Mau Mau's whole game plan is to lay low. Don't let anyone know how smart you are. Don't stick out because the nail that sticks out is the one that gets hammered down first. But you know what she does immediately? Let's the other servant girls know that she can read. When she sees someone sick, she sticks her neck out to help them because that's what she does. When one of the emperor's wives are losing his favor, Mau Mau gives out trade secrets to help. Mau Mau is a really good person, but she is only half of the equation. Now I'm gonna hold your hand when I say this. It's okay to like a character just because they make you giggle. If I was to give a very surface reason as to why we like Jinchi, it's because as a chronically single person, he makes me giggle. It, it's nice seeing someone get all of the male attention that I so desperately crave. I'm okay, wait, I'm just kidding. Cut that out. The Apothecary Diaries is a mystery show and every episode has its own problem that must be solved, usually being solved by the end of the episode. Except for Jinchi is one mystery that we don't really get to uncover. The audience gets hints of his backstory and occasionally Mau Mau will question something which will make us question him, like Jinchi being immature for his age or him being rather developed for a unit. But that's it. All we're getting is crumbs, not enough to make bread. Jinchi Jinji and Mau Mau make a really good pairing in the sense that they're both very good and kind people at heart. Jinji is rich but not pompous. He is ignorant but not arrogant. His greenest flag is the fact that he's willing to accept the fact that he's ignorant and accept 
help from other people. Almost immediately, Jinchi accepts the fact that Mao Mao is intelligent and is well qualified. He never hesitates to ask her for help and actually takes joy in watching her work and uncover these mysteries. The existence of Sir Jinchi and his complex character is evidence that the show respects their audience. But what does it mean to respect your audience? I think respecting your audience is best explained as giving them what they signed up for and never dumbing it down because you don't think they can understand. There is a sense of pride that comes from recognizing and remembering the small Easter eggs that are scattered throughout the story. I remember when I was watching Apothecary Diaries in Japanese, I was struggling to figure out why I couldn't understand what was going on. Even with the subtitles on, I was having a hard time following the actual Japanese language. And that's because they switch between formal and informal dialects so often. Mao Mao, being a low-ranking servant, talks to everyone very formally and remains composed even in stressful situations. Sir Jinchi, on the other hand, is very high-ranking, but he still talks to everyone in a very formal manner. Everyone except for Mao Mao and a couple other people. And I love that he switches to a more casual conversation, a casual talk with Mao Mao because he's really trying to make her feel more comfortable. He likes her more than commanding respect. But even if you can't pick up on the switches between formal and informal Japanese, you can just watch how the characters interact with each other and you realize that is telling a story. You may think that the power distance between the characters fluctuates, because Mao Mao does indeed call people out and she's even hit people before, but she only does that when she can borrow the power from other people. Mao Mao weaponizes Jinchi's power. The Apothecary Diaries requires the audience to actually remember what happens earlier in the story because there will be a payoff later on. And there's two types of stories that do this. There's the ones that say the random man in the back of the room was an Easter egg for something that's happening in the final season, which doesn't necessarily work because nobody was expecting that and now we just feel stupid but with apothecary diaries we'll hear an inner monologue from mao mao she'll say something like wow jinchi is very immature for his age it doesn't seem like much but she said it more than once so now we'd audience know that that is something that we should hold on to because it might be important later on it may seem childish but when you're watching a story you don't want to feel stupid you want to feel like you're figuring it out and it was possible to figure out. The author should not be the only one that knows what's going on. Lastly, this is not the main reason why Apothecary Diaries is going to go down in history, but I do think we forget to include this when we talk about how great an anime is. And that's the animation. Obviously, as an anime fan, I want the animation in my anime to look good. This is completely not scripted. I'm just speaking from my heart right now. I love the colors. I love how brilliant and saturated it is. It's eye candy. I'm tired of super realistic anime. I want eye candy. If I wanted to watch something that looked like Game of Thrones, I'd watch Game of Thrones. Give me something I can't get in real life. I love how how smart they are to switch from chibi, cute, funny, comedic relief and serious characters. I feel like that used to be a lot more popular in anime back in the day when you'd have to maybe save money drawing characters a bit more simple. We don't really see that anymore, at least with a lot of the big hits. Mao Mao's dancing scene with that dress, it was, I was holding my breath while watching it because the buildup to it all. You know, we've seen Mao Mao serve as a waitress, a part-time courtesan, and we've seen the beauty that she holds. And it just coming together in one big final was such, such a thank you to the audience. If you made it this far into the video, please go ahead and subscribe and give this video a like if you liked the video and leave a comment because I don't know what anime to watch in this next season so I need some suggestions. Be sure to find me on Instagram and on Twitch and join my discord server if you like talking about anime with strangers online. 